This is the Horn of Africa, Eritrea, Djibouti, Somalia and Ethiopia. Three of these nations have coastlines to die for, or in Biden's mind, the coastlines to go to war over. After all, a lot of the world's oil and trade moves through here. And then there is Yemen, a strategic country with no real leader. Ethiopia is also a regional power center with grand economic ambitions and the audacity to be independent in its foreign policy decisions. Ethiopia makes it hard to destabilize the Horn of Africa and so Biden is destabilizing Ethiopia. You see, Ethiopia ended a border dispute with Eritrea and ever since, the two have been friends and they're not so close to the US. But they do have friends, friends who are USA's allies like the UAE. All in all, how Obama fueled the Arab Spring in his time, Biden is hoping for a Horn of Africa Spring himself. And if that means sending American troops to yet another war in a country that they have nothing to do with, then so be it. But there's a challenge, and it has left Biden red-faced. Hi, and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host, Shubhangi, and in this video, I will tell you how the Biden administration has been left with a huge embarrassment in the Horn of Africa. Let's begin. The US never really had an edge over the Horn of Africa. This is precisely why the Biden administration is stoking conflict in the crucial region, which is the passage between the West and the East. By dominating the Horn of Africa, the US can dominate the Bab al-Mandab Strait, which connects the Red Sea with the Gulf of Aden and through which much of the global trade passes. The US can dominate this strait only if it controls the Horn of Africa and to establish that, it is pushing Ethiopia into a civil war. Ethiopia is currently facing a rebellion in its northernmost region of Tigray. The rebellion is led by a group called the TPLF. The Biden administration claims that Ethiopia's forces and officials are committing human rights violations in Tigray and therefore the US must get involved with a quote-unquote humanitarian intervention. The USA's commander of Combined Joint Task Force in the Horn of Africa, General William L. Zena, recently confirmed the US was looking to intervene in Ethiopia if the situation worsens. According to reports, Washington has been considering using its base in Djibouti to launch attacks on Ethiopian forces and assets. This will help the TPLF in its endeavor to capture the capital city of Addis Ababa and begin a cultural genocide on all non-Tigray people. But Djibouti has said no. All was going as planned. But then Djibouti stepped in with a simple no. It said its territory cannot be used by the US for attacking other countries and now the Biden administration has been left embarrassed. Djibouti's Foreign Minister Mahmoud Ali Yusuf tweeted that the US will not be allowed to strike Ethiopia from its military bases inside the country. He said, General William Zena, the commander of the Camp Lemonier, gave an interview to the BBC explaining how the American forces in Djibouti were carrying out a mission of fighting terrorism and the protection of their nationals in the unlikely event of evacuation. The foreign minister added, Some expressed the concern about Djibouti's territory being used for hostile intervention in the neighboring countries. That is not going to happen for the Djiboutian government is attached to its relations with its neighbors. If that was not enough, he also said, Djibouti appreciates its strategic partnership with the United States, but this partnership is not oriented against any country whatsoever. Now, the whole Horn of Africa is against Biden. Djibouti has become the latest country to resist Washington's plans, plunging the region into a war it never asked for. It becomes the latest entrant in a list of countries that want nothing to do with the US, leave alone the likes of Somalia and Sudan. Even Eritrea is least interested to entertain Washington's lust for bloodshed in the Horn of Africa. Eritrea has deployed its soldiers to aid Ethiopia's forces in their fight against the TPLF. Sudan, meanwhile, has come to rest squarely in the lap of Russia and will not extend any help to the United States. As far as Somalia is concerned, the US has bombed the hell out of it and Washington is simply not in a position to use its territories for operations against Ethiopia. What we therefore have is a region that has united against the US and is not willing to let itself be consumed by Washington's thirst for conflicts.